Elizabeth Town Council. Deborah, can we have the roll call? Yes. Chairman Lennon? Here. Councillor Gouvenali? Here. Councillor Jordan? Here. Councillor Ray? Here. Councillor Sherman? Here. Councillor Sullivan? Here. And Councillor Walsh? Here. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Town Council reports and correspondence. Jim? I'd just like to bring to the Council's attention and the general public that we have an ordinance committee meeting on Wednesday morning at 8 o'clock to address the continuing discussion on short-term rentals. And at that meeting, we'll also discuss with the committee um, the issue of habitats so that people can feel static in the, in the air. But anyway, I just wanted to prove that on the record that we have a Wednesday morning. Thank you. Thank you. All are well. Jessica? Um, uh, first of all, we have uh, two openings on the Zoning Board of Appeals. The Appointments Committee will be meeting on the 17th of January. So if there's anyone that's uh, interested, um, we have some applicants, but if anyone else would like to apply for this, we're taking applications through Friday the 13th. They can apply online or um, in the town hall uh, with the town clerk. And I have one more item. The um, town had, uh, the council had authorized and hired DMON Associates to conduct a fundraising feasibility study uh, in consideration of a possible library project. That study has been completed and the final report will be given to the Board of Tru Thomas Memorial Library Board of Trustees and the Foundation Thursday at 7 p.m. at the library. Thank you. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to note, sadly, um, just before Christmas, an, an August member of uh, the great generation died here in Cape Elizabeth, Dick Dahlbeck. Um, Dick was 82. He had lived in Cape Elizabeth many years, and he served on the town council uh, during one term, uh, 92 to 95. His, uh, his presence in Cape and the community and, and, and his church, St. Albans, was very notable because Dick had a really strong dedication to public service, contributing to others and doing work for others. And I thought it would be worthwhile hi highlighting some of this because I think he's sort of a role model for public involvement uh, that we could all look to. He, um, at St. Albans, where I, this is where I knew Dick, um, he offered sage advice and reviewed our budgets with a sharp eye, but more importantly, um, in his leadership roles in the church, he's more, he supported many of the ministries right to, right to the end this past summer, in fact. And Mike uh, sent us a note describing Dick's involvement in, um, in town uh, operations during his uh, period on the town council. Uh, he was a major proponent of uh, the principle of taking care of your heaviest roads, travel, heaviest travel roads first. In other words, he took his responsibility for stewardship very seriously and he took his responsibility to the broader community very seriously. Um, until I read Dick's obituary, I didn't appreciate how involved he was in the Portland area and the state. His contributions over the years are really too numerous to mention, but some of them included being chairman of the Portland Chamber of Commerce. He was on the board of United Way. He helped start Nassen College, which is now part of UNE. He was appointed by Governor Kernan to, um, as commissioner of the Maine Health Care Finance Commission. Um, he was a trustee of the Maine Municipal Association, Property and Casualty Pool. He was on the board of Camp Bishop Woods and Camp Oatka. He just a whole range of things. And his, um, his sort of final advice to all of us as, as he was near his death, as reported in the Press Herald, was um, that one, try to do more with family and stay close. Two, live productive, satisfied lives. And three, do things for others. And I think his, his life was a really a... Uh, a model of these things. It's good for us to think about. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? I just wanted to read a little excerpt of a letter that um, was mailed to our town manager last week uh, from Mr. Kennedy Lane. Dear Mike, year after year your leadership team has done a tremendous job, sometimes in the face of significant budget constraints and other adverse conditions. <clears throat> a big part of the town's success is the exceptional skill and diligence of Robert Malley. Even after epic snowstorms, our roads are clear and potholes free while other cities have a foot or more of snow on the roads, even in their downtowns. 
Way to go, Mike, for hiring and nurturing such outstanding talent for over a quarter of a century. That's great leadership. Thank you. Sincerely, yours, Ken. Just thought that was a nice nod to all the people who work for our, on behalf of our citizens for our town that often don't get recognized. So, um, this is an opportunity for citizens um, to speak to items that are not on the agenda, if there are any who wish to speak now. Town Manager? Yes, uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, first, I just want to thank Frank for those comments. Uh, Dick was truly a wonderful person. And I think you, you captured him well. Thank you. Uh, did want to mention uh, two things. I, I see Greg Miles up here in the audience, our facilities director. Mm -hmm. Uh, one project we just completed this past month uh, was the interior painting of Port the Portland Headlight Tower. And uh, Greg uh, had me go down someday last week, Friday maybe it was, with the contractor who did it. And it, it was just amazing to see the change on the inside of that tower. Uh, before there was lead paint that was peeling and it wasn't the safest place to go. And now there's, there's this beautiful coat of lightish yellow, I don't know what the color is, but. Uh, that is, is the natural color uh, that it has been for years and years, it should have been, uh, on the whole inside of the tower. In addition, the, for those of you that have been in there, the cast iron stairway was all painted. And uh, it was just a, a tremendous uh, effort, particularly by the contractor. And it's not the easiest place to work uh, in that tower. And uh, it just, uh, you know, I think it's really important that we preserve our landmarks <coughs> and one that, you know, it was entrusted to us. and. Uh, it's just a really nice project, and I look forward, uh, maybe the council sometime soon, uh, maybe when it's a little warmer, uh, all having a chance to, to see the work that was done and uh, maybe go up to the tower. And, uh, it's a great place to take a few photos. So anyway, uh, uh, and if anyone else you know, in the community is really interested, we can arrange uh, folks to look at that, but not in the short term, because uh, the paint is, uh, with the humidity <laughs> and other issues there, it's, it's still drying, so we'd, we'd prefer. Uh, wait, wait a little bit on that. Secondly, I wanted to make mention, we, we got our annual uh, workers' compensation bill, and one of the things Dick was involved in was helping to reform the, the workers' compensation system in the state. And when, when you get a workers' comp bill, it is based on the experience of the employees. Uh, how, many, how many losses do you have? How, how, much are, is there, how much lost time is there? How, medical bills, et cetera, lawyers' bills, uh, although not as much as they used to be. Anyway, uh, we're in a, in a, in a, a main municipal association, association workers' comp pool, workers' compensation pool. Uh, and every year in, in very late December, early January, we get our rates for uh, the next year. And, you know, and, and the rates fluctuate you know, a little bit. But what's, what's really more important in many respects is the experience modification, that portion of the bill that reflects your lost experience. And I think it was four years ago, we were at 1.22. We had had a, a couple of incidents with uh, issues with return to work, which, which I won't go into. Uh, it, on uh, the school side, they happened to be, but they could have been anywhere. Uh, and so we, we were paying 22% more than the rates would, would indicate. Uh, it, it's been dropping year by year, and last year was 0.88, and we just got the bill for this year, and it was 0.82. So, you know, that's tremendous progress. The other thing I really wanted to make reference in regard to that is that last year the school department only had two lost time incidents the entire year. One of them was for less than $500, and the other one is, was something that happened very late in December, and they have a, they have a loss reserve on it that's more than it's going to be. But it, there were only two. On the municipal uh, piece in, you know, involving municipal departments, they, they're, through January 1st, there had not been a lost time incident for over two years. And, you know, when you think of workers' comp and the history of workers' comp in this state, that, that's pretty amazing. The, so that's good news, and I think is a real credit to all of our employees for, you know, being careful when they work, to uh, the department heads who helped oversee that. Although I, I, I have to mention, with all that, that we did have a we did have one lost time incident since January 1 uh, involving the, the lifting of a patient. So, uh, you know, that uh, I'm really pleased and, and appreciative of the employees and uh, the department heads on that. The third thing I wanted to mention is that uh, we started, thanks to the council's approval on January 1, the, the rescue per diem folks, paramedics, 
being at the police station uh, each day. And while, while the first few days were busy, we only had two calls over about four days. Uh, it is a seven-day-a-week thing, and this weekend we had two, uh, you know, s serious medical issues. And in, in both cases, the rescue was on the road within a minute of the call. And, uh, you know, I don't know ultimately the fates of the, the folks that were, you know, were involved in those incidents. And, uh, but regardless, I think it, it, uh, it's already making a difference, we believe, and definitely making a difference in the response time. And, I think it was a really important action that the council took a couple of months ago. So, thank you. Great, great, great. Thank you. Uh, review of the minutes from December twelfth, twenty eleven. Anyone have a motion? Uh, move to approve. A second. Any changes, corrections? All those in favor? Uh, item twenty six, two thousand twelve sewer rates. It's recommended that we set a public hearing for the proposed sewer user fees for Monday, February 13th at 7 right here in the town hall. Um, of note, for anyone interested, we will have a workshop. We'll review it at our workshop this coming Wednesday, the 11th at 7 o'clock in the Jordan Conference Room. Is there a motion? I no? move that uh, we uh, set a public hearing on the proposed sewer rates used uh, user fees for Monday, the 15th of February at 7 p.m. 13th. 13th, I'm sorry, at 7 p.m. Thanks. Discussion? Those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, item 27, uh, property at 349 Ocean House Road, uh, an easement. It's recommended that we approve an access and utility easement from 349 Ocean House Road in Cape Elizabeth um, from the high school driveway for a lump sum, with a lump sum payment of $5,000 to be credited to the school department. Is there a motion? Uh, and move that uh, we accept this recommendation for uh, the easement with the collection of five thousand. Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, item twenty-eight has to do with store a storage space lease at the property at Fort Williams Park, building number three twenty-six. Uh, we're being asked to approve a lease of storage space. Um, at Fort Williams to the Behavioral Health Resources for $37 a month, and that same uh, leasee is also choosing to ep exercise its option to lease, um, I'm sorry, on the existing lease to rent additional space in Building 326. Total income from all tenants in the building is now 28000 annually, with possibly one additional uh, lease anticipated. Yeah, I, I want to thank Greg for his work on this, and actually the Constance Jordan, the local resident who is the principal in behavioral uh, health resources today, called today specifically to note and say appreciated working with Greg on this. Uh, I would like to indicate that the same lessee is also exercising its option existing lease. Uh, we've been told that they, they, plan, they plan to exercise that option, but they haven't exercised it yet, so that will be coming uh, sometime, so some months down the road. But it, it is anticipated to happen in a few months. And if they choose not to, is that space then open for someone else? Yeah, they have a year's option, so within the, within the year's period, uh, they do have that ability. We're also, uh, Greg is currently discussing with uh, uh, another tenant uh, the remaining space in the building that's not under option or, uh, or lease. Mike, the, or Sarah, the, it's $37 a month, so I, I'm trying to figure out what, where that number comes from. It's storage area in the basement. Uh, okay, so it's nothing substantial. No, no. Okay. But, it's, but it all adds up. You know, I understand. I have a question, although we haven't had a motion. Um, why does that person get a whole year to make a decision? It seems like they could maybe decide faster. You know, we were extremely appreciative of this particular tenant when after the building was empty for two years. They were the first one to, uh, to get it open and to... Uh, you know, show the potential of the building again, and it's interesting. As soon as they did that, we've had uh, what th three, four, five. In fact, if, if the one he's talking to now uh, doesn't pan out, there's even another one that's starting to talk to Greg about it. So, it was mainly a case of the first in. Uh, we wanted we we wanted to get someone in there to really accommodate them to get the building occupied again. Frank, Mike, um, I can well imagine that there are many people, or organizations in town that would love to uh, rent 
storage space, and I'm curious as what parameters do we put around the availability of the space? I, uh, Greg looks like he wants to talk, so I'll defer to him. <laughs> <laughs> With the chairs and the chairman's permission. Please. In this particular space, uh, the basement area is, is accessed from a doghouse entry out on the exterior of the building. So it was easy to be able to uh, put that in for us to use. Not all space is available that way. So it was just, she needed some additional storage space and it worked out real well for that. How much space is this? It's about 150 square feet. And if, if someone wanted to rent just something <clears throat> like that, would they come to you and ask about it? Or do you think this is sort of a one-off? I've never had anybody ask me before. Um, they get to beat their way through the cobwebs and spiders first, but. <laughs> Thank you. Any other question for Greg? So I, I have a motion if you're ready. I'm ready. <laughs> um, I move that we approve a lease of storage space at Fort Williams Park to Behavioral Health Resources, Inc. for $37 per month. I'll second. Discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, item 29, Fort Williams Park Master Plan. It's recommended we set a public hearing on the proposed revisions to the Fort Williams Master Plan from Monday, February 13th at 7 o'clock in Town Hall. Do we have a motion? Thank you, Greg. I move that uh, the Town Council sent a public hearing on the proposed revisions to the Fort Williams Park Master Plan from Monday, February 13th, 2012 at 7 p.m. here at the Cape Elizabeth Town Hall. Second. Any discussion? Just a couple of comments about this. Um, when, when the Fort Williams Advisory uh, Commission started work on this, they were hopeful that they were going to get this done and get it to us by the end of the year, and they've accomplished that. And I, my hat's off to, uh, to Bill Nickerson and the commission, but also a special thank you to John Mitchell and his team at Mitchell and Associates, because a lot of the work and a lot of the the effort and energy that went on behind the scenes to get this product to us is really due to the work of this group. And the council all has a hard copy of the plan. Uh, yeah, I, like the on I like the caution, 37 megabytes here. <laughs> Do not open before your computer will seize up. <laughs> Any other discussion? Uh, I just want to note that this is another topic that we'll be discussing in our workshop this Wednesday night for those interested. Um, okay, all those in favor? Yes. Item number 30, the Fort Williams Park 2012 Vendor Program. Uh, <clears throat> we're being asked to approve the 2012 Fort Williams Park Vendor Program recommended by the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Uh, I see some people in the audience who may or may not want to speak to this item. Okay. Uh, if, if I might, Sarah, the, the folks on in the, in the audience just introduced them. Uh, Carl and Sarah Sutton. Uh, they were the, the folks that ran the uh, the uh, the main centric. I still call it, but bite into Maine was that the name of it? Uh, it was their all main type products uh, up on the hill at the park and very very popular selection of items. Is that motion. Uh, sure. I'll, uh, I move that we approve the 2012 Fort Williams Park Vendor Program as recommended by the Fort Williams Advisory uh, Commission. I'll second that. Any discussion? Yeah. Do we know what we made last year for income? The, the income, it's, it's about ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000 a year. Thank you. I think um, it's uh, Bob had indicated in a, a note that I asked uh, for 14,000 in revenue for this coming year. He's projecting this coming That's year. That's what he's projecting, yeah. yes. Yeah, it's a little bit more because of the, there's, a, there's an additional site this coming year, too. Right. Mike, do, do you want to <coughs> say when the applications are due, or will there be a chance to say, tell about, say that later? Uh, no, it's, if you like now. Uh, I think it's, what, the 27th of, of this month? 26th? Yeah. 26th of this month. 
and then they'll be reviewed by a committee consisting of uh, Bill Brownell, Aaron Grady, Bob Malley, myself. Am I forgetting someone, Bill? No. Uh, we'll review them and then work with the vendors uh, to uh, get the program going for another year. We're trying to get started much earlier this year. Great. Yeah. Um, just the committee that Mike mentioned, I just want to encourage them to take advantage of their number three criteria of using their judgment on the, how the appearance of the cart will enhance the enjoyment of the fort. I just know that was a, one of the issues that people commented a lot about this past year. And so if we could just keep that on the forefront of our minds when reviewing the applications. Uh, I, I had an opportunity to visit these carts last summer and received a lot of positive comments from other visitors to the park. I thought they were terrific. Uh, I was just going to have a question for the town manager. Is, is the primary difference between last year and this year the addition of that site? There, there are two differences. One is, is, is uh, an addition of a site at the beach uh, that is recommended that has to sell ice, an ice cream type product but then can propose whatever else they want to sell. And then the, the Suttons who are on the top of the hill, it's proposed to move that to the other side of the, the main road uh, so, it, so it's not quite sticking out so much in the area where uh, there's a handicapped parking spot there and there's a, the old parade ground road. And we're looking somewhere along there wherever it, it best meets the customer needs. It's kind of, it's in that little corner, but it's not uh, exactly defined. I'm wondering, if, Mike, if we have any statistics about last year's success of the program, whether it's the uh, number of customers that were there or, or anything that might highlight the success of the program and the profitability um, that it might allow vendors to encourage you know, as, as strong of bids as possible. I know we don't have financials on the, on the vendors, but anything that might make it a more competitive bidding process. We, uh, anecdotally, you know, every, everyone said they, they, did, they did okay, they did well. Uh, we believe, but we're not sure that most of them are interested in coming back. Uh, one we spoke to that said, you know, it's not as, as profitable as everyone thinks that it, it is, uh, but still would like to come back. Uh, but we don't have any exact statistics. I go back to what Dave Sherman said. You know, we, we had an awful lot of folks that just liked the fact that they were there and, uh, you know, enjoyed, enjoyed their food selections and uh, liked that it was an additional resource in the park. Thank you. Is one of the other differences that there's not going to be a split season this year? Does it look like the permits are for the May through October? season. Right? Anything else? All those in favor? Um, item 31 motor coach fee update. This is actually not a motion, just an update? Well, it, it's an update, but I just, it's sort of a, uh, I'm, I'm tr you know, you, you propose fees a certain way, and this is sort of a notice that we, we're trying to work with the, 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 uh, the industry. And, you know, it's, it, and we continue to have meetings. We have another meeting tomorrow with the trolley. We have a meeting with the uh, Discover Portland uh, Tour thing, Gene McGurn's outfit. The yeah. different, the different folks we've seen at the different meetings. We had, we had uh, the, the one that's featured here is for the cruise ships. We've had a meeting with Greg Gordon, and they've all been very good. Everyone's been really helpful, very cooperative, and very much wants to work with us. And I just wanted to make sure by putting us on the agenda that we're not off track of what we're doing in the way that we're working, and that that this that you don't have a concern with this discount of of the five dollars if they bring in a hundred buses or more per year. And, and it's a real key that they're willing to give us a certificate of insurance, listing the town as additional insured. That's, uh, that's a great addition to the plan. We really, you know, we want to work to, as much as possible, to set up billing systems and to, to reduce the administ administration. One thing we are looking at, uh, you know, Gene Gross will be heading up this, uh, you know, as it evolves, uh, more heavily involved as it gets started. But we're also looking at uh, proposing and we may do it fairly soon because we want it in place for the season, of having uh, someone who's there during the prime season as a greeter mm -hmm. uh, that is responsible for looking at the fees, but we, we want them more as a greeter that they do a number of things. They, they explain the park, they, they you know, do a little welcome, 
uh, but, but most importantly is that they, they give people directions to, to the vendors in the park, as well as if they want a more substantial meal, that will give them directions to restaurants in Cape Elizabeth and a particular focus on Cape Elizabeth businesses. And uh, we, we're calling them greeters. We're thinking of polo shirts and you know khakis or something like that. Uh, uh, just something that, uh, again, we would be better having statistics if we have someone there all the time. Uh, and uh, just uh, increasing the hospitality. It's an opportunity. That's one of the issues that the, the motor coach industry had is what added value are you giving us for this? And so we were looking at ways would give them added value as well as give the entire park and the entire community added value. And we think this greeter, greeter uh, plan does that. Is this uh, $5 per bus per trip? Yes. Uh, just for the public to understand, it's, it says one specific opportunity is to offer a $5 discount to any vendor bringing in at least 100 buses per year and who agrees to provide the town a certificate of insurance listing the town as an additional insured and agrees to work together on monthly billings. Um, that's the deal they're talking about. Frank? Um, Mike, during the, uh, during the period of time we were discussing this at council meetings, some people expressed concerns about the possibility of some buses canceling their trips to Cape Elizabeth. Have you detected any of that? No, it, it's uh, a woman by the name of Lynn Tillotson from the, the Portland Chamber of Commerce, Greater Portland Convention of Visitors Bureau, get the right one. I went to a bus conference, and so there were a couple. She, she sent me back comments. She, she had prepared this nice brochure that uh, explained uh, the system, and there were a couple that were a little angry about it, but, uh, you know, in, in, in but, you know, one reason we're structuring this the way they are, the questions were, can we pay in advance? Can, what add, what add value is there? And, you know, some of these types of questions. Mm -hmm. there, there was an issue of fairness, how are you going to make sure that you're really collecting it from everyone? Mm -hmm. And that's where we came up with this greeter, greeter provision. But, uh, yeah, there, there's been, you know, there's a bar. Whether or not there'll be a bite, I'm not sure. Right. Okay. But, but, the, but the, the main players who, who include Gene McGurn, you know, the, the main tour connection, they get the name of the company, is I've had a very nice conversation with the trolley folks who are coming in tomorrow, and with the cruise ships, you know, the relationship is very strong with them. And, you know, one of the other things with the cruise ships that we agreed is that the, the folks get on the cruise ships, they get on these buses, and they have their tour guide, they begin to develop a relationship with their tour guide, and then they arrive here, and they immediately get given to another tour guide inside the lighthouse. They've agreed, and we've agreed, that their tour guide from the bus, for those that have the museum tour, are going to continue and do the tour in the museum, sure. rather than have our folks do it, which is another reason for this discount is, is you know, and it's, it's better for them because that rapport and relationship's developed. And, and their guides have heard the museum uh, presentation. Uh, you know, they hear it, you know, 15 times a season. So we, you know, we have every confidence that they'll be able to do it in a very professional way. Great, thank you. Other comments? So we don't need to vote. It's just an update. Or do you want just, to? Do? Just if you tell me we're, I'm going in the wrong direction, uh, I'll, I'll change things accordingly. Otherwise, we'll probably come back for an amendment to the original approval once we have finished meeting with uh, the core group. I think there's a sense you're going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Item number 32, capital stewardship plan. Um, is there a motion? Dave? Uh, I move that we acknowledge receipt of the fiscal year 2013, okay, 2013 through 2022 capital stewardship plan. Seconded. Any comments? So I get a little confused, but I realize now that Dave <laughs> was correct. <laughs> Uh, that's this report that we currently have in front of us, and for any interested citizens, it's on the website and can be downloaded and looked at. Um, all those in favor? Unanimous. Um, now is a second opportunity for citizens to discuss items that were not on our agenda. Seeing no one, move on. Um, so the next three items sh we uh, we're going to take an executive session. So I need, I guess, I need a motion for that. Jessica, I move that um, 
we uh, enter into executive sessions for items 33, 2012, 34, 2012, and 35. 2012 and 36. 2012. It's four, sorry. In, a second. in accordance with the indicated statutes. Yes. Thank you. It has to be a part of the motion. <laughs> okay. In accordance with the indicated statutes. <laughs> uh, any discussion? was in favor. Okay. So will we come back at all, Sarah? Um, you might have to put a 36. Out oh, to vote. Yeah, it looks that way. Uh, we'll check back out. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go off the air, yeah. though, but we'll come back into public after we finish the executive yeah. sessions. Yeah. Is that right? I think yeah. to yeah. vote, yeah. yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you.